Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can easily validate your data using Vapor, a popular server-side Swift framework. Validation is a fancy way of describing the process of checking that a source data matches what you expect it to be. For example, if you ask the user to input their email address, you should probably add some validation code to make sure that the data they enter is actually an email address and not some garbage data. You could write this validation code in plain old Swift. However, since this is such a common requirement for web apps, Vapor actually has some handy classes that makes this process way easier. Let's take a look. I'm going to create a new Vapor project with Vapor new hello validation. Switch to the directory I just created and generate a project for it with Vapor Xcode. Now I'll open main.swift and delete this boilerplate. Let's start by creating a basic route to demonstrate the problem here. I'll look to see if the request contains some data called input and try and cast it as a string. If this fails, I'll abort. Then I'll simply return the raw input. If I build and run, I can use rested to send some input data to that route, and I see it logged out. Note that I can submit data with any format here. I can add special characters, spaces, basically whatever I want. Now, what if I want to restrict that input somehow? For example, what if I want to make it only alphanumeric characters? Well, with Vapor, that's easy. Vapor comes with a generic type called valid, which represents a piece of data that has passed validation. It comes with a type parameter that you set to something that implements the validator protocol. Valid has a type parameter for the kind of validator that you want to use. Vapor comes with many of these, such as only alphanumeric, for example. To use it, there's just two steps. First, you create a variable of type valid and set the type parameter to the validator that you want to use. And second, you take your input data and you call validated on it. You pass the result into that valid generic that you created earlier. Let's try this out. I'll create a new route here to make sure the input data only contains alphanumeric characters. As discussed, step one to do this is to create a variable of type valid. We'll set the type parameter to the validator that we want to use, only alphanumeric in this case. The second step is to take our input data and call validated on it. If it fails to validate, it will throw. Otherwise, it will continue on OK. We can return the validated result with input.value. If I build and run, I can try submitting some input to this route. If I enter data with only alphanumeric characters, it works fine. However, if I try entering non-alphanumeric characters, I get a validation error, as expected. You might wonder, what is the benefit of using this valid type over simply just calling a method that checks to see if the data is valid and returns true or false or something instead? The benefit of using this valid type is it provides your code with the concept of value safety. Basically, by doing it this way, you know that there's never anything inside your valid type that hasn't been validated. This can help prevent mistakes. Remember that you can set the type parameter on valid to a variety of different validators. We've only looked at alphanumeric so far, but there's many more. Let's take a look. Next, I'll create a route to test for a valid email address. Vapor comes with a built-in validator for this already called email. I'll validate the input data with that and return as before. If I build and run, I can try entering an email address and it works. I can also try entering something that is not an email address and it fails validation. Next, let's create a route to test that the input data is unique. I'll look for the input as a string and abort if it's not there. Then I'll create a valid type with the type parameter set to a unique array of strings. The idea here is that it will make sure the array I pass in contains no duplicates. I'll then convert the raw string into an array validate it, and return the data as usual. If I build and run, I can enter a comma-separated array with unique values, and it works. But if I try entering a duplicated value, then it fails validation as expected. Next, let's create a route to see if the input matches an expected value. For example, maybe we're making an app for a spy agency. We want to test if the secret agent knows the code phrase of the day. I'll create a new route here called matches. Look for a parameter called input as a string. And now I'll create a valid type with the type parameter set to matching for a particular string. 
The question is, how do I specify the string to match here? Well, it turns out there's an overloaded version of validated that allows you to customize the behavior of some of the different validators, such as matches, for example. I'll use the overloaded version of validated by passing in by, and then I'll use the matches constructor passing in the top secret code phrase, the red fox trots quietly at midnight. I'll then return as usual. If I build and run and try to enter the wrong code phrase, I get denied. But if I enter the correct code phrase, I'm in, and I can begin my secret mission. Let's create a new route to see if the input value is within a list of spy names. I'll gather the input data as usual and create an array of spy names. Then I can use the invalidator to see if the input is within this collection. If I build and run, I can try entering a name that is a spy, and he gets in. But if I enter a non-spy, they are rejected. Next, let's create a route to see if an input collection contains an expected value. Let's say we want to see if the spy's list of equipment includes an explosive pen. I'll gather the input data as usual and use the contains validator to see if it contains an explosive pen. If I build and run, I can send the list of equipment in, and if it contains the explosive pen, then we're good. But if not, then it fails. There's one final validator I'd like to show you. This one can be used to check if the count of something is within a given range. It works for numeric types like ints, as you might expect, but it also works for strings or collections. For strings, it's the length of the string, and for collections, it's the count of items within the collection. Let's create a new route to demonstrate count. There are four different ways to use count, so let's make a case for each one here. First, I'll add a test to see if the value has a minimum of one. Second, I'll add a test to see if the value has a maximum of 100. Third, I'll add a test to see if the value is between 40 and 60. And fourth, I'll add a test to see if the value is exactly 50. Finally, I'll log out all the values here. If I build and run, I can test these out. I'll first start by guessing zero, and I get too low. Then I can guess 200, and I get too high. If I guess 20, well, I get that it's not between 40 and 60. If I guess 55, I get that it's not 50. Finally, I guess 50, and all four tests validate. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to validate data in Vapor using the built-in validators. The built-in validators that come with Vapor are definitely a great start, and they solve a lot of common problems. But very frequently, you want to combine different validators together, or even create your own custom validators. And that's the subject of my next screencast. If you like this screencast, please leave a comment below. I guess I'm just in need for some validation. I'm out.